Hello, it's the start of October and I feel it's going to be a very inky month so I thought I would start out by reviewing this Inktense Paint Pan Studio Set by Derwent. So let's get into it! The one I have here is the 24 set and it's a pretty wide box as you can tell just from the packaging here. Derwent also have sets of 12 which look like this. This is I think the original one they released quite a long time ago. I've had this in my stash but I've never really used it maybe once or twice and I kind of forgot I had it to be quite honest with you. Also my brush had a uh, lid missing so that was kind of annoying as well but they released a second set I think it's set B and I'm pretty sure it's the other half of this 24 set so half of my colors should be in here and then the other half would be the set that I don't have and they've also released other sets I think there's a metallics and a graphite tint and things like that but I don't know if I'm going to get those I'm going to put this one just to the side here and I'm only going to focus on this 24 set today let's open it and see what's inside that is a really long palette it's so skinny and it's very wide so if I grab a ruler we're looking at about just under 11 inches or in metric we have about 27 centimeters so I'll just show you the box really quickly so you can have a read that's the front and on the back are different languages there now let's open the main part of this it's got a little catch there and it also has a swatch card in here but I will paint these out onto some watercolor paper so we can see them properly and this brush at least has a lid hooray <laughs> so it's a standard water brush but it is quite a lot shorter than other water brushes I have so here's a Pentel Aquash water brush you can see that's quite a difference these are handy for small boxes because I find that usually standard size water brushes are always too long and it has a little sponge as well in the smaller 12 set it also has a sponge about that size and the brush I think is the same length I did notice now that the little half pans of color are quite loose in there so I think they're all going to fall out oh yes those come out pretty easily so I would not want to tip this box upside down because you're going to lose all of these palettes of color now if you drop a bit of water in and sit these on top it does kind of help get them to stick but I think I'll just leave it for the moment so the colors we have in here are sherbet lemon which looks quite green but I think from what I remember from the pencils and the blocks is that it does go a lemony kind of color I think just with a slightly greenish undertone there's sun yellow mango bright orange cherry poppy red fuchsia dark plum violet navy blue mid ultramarine bright blue turquoise teal green racing green Ionian green hookers green kiwi burnt yellow ochre red oxide natural brown Payne's gray ink black and antique white uh, I really wish they'd stop putting white in sets of paints like this because it never works oh, I get so frustrated with it but anyway we're stuck with it for now so I will draw up a little swatch card to put in here on some watercolor paper and I'll paint them out to see how close they look to this actual swatch sheet that they've provided here we go I found this little off cut of Canson Moulin du Roy paper my favorite watercolor paper so I might as well just use this and I can use this very handy template to cut out a little swatch card from it and I'll rule that up and I will come back once I've done all of that here's my card ruled out I've made my swatches a bit bigger than the ones on here and I'm going to use this little brush for swatching even though I'm not a big fan of them because the points are usually far too small and annoying but I'll give it a go I filled it with water oh, look it's all coming out down there so it does work quite well by the looks of things I've also got a pot of water here which I'll just probably end up rinsing this brush rather than constantly wiping it on the tissue and I will just swatch out all the colors and we'll see if they match this and then I will actually do a painting with them
here they all are swatched out. So a couple of things I notice right away. One of them is that they are just a bit chalkier than what I would expect out of a professional watercolour. Even a couple of them have a bit of granulation, it looks like, in them. Some of them they dry a little bit funny because it is an ink and once it does dry it will not budge. So I'll just try and match these up and see if they look the same. They've done pretty well at matching up these colours with the actual colours of the Inktense paint pans. And I'm quite impressed with that because quite often when you get a printed swatch card they don't really match at all what the paints look like so they've done extremely well with that. And just in case you're interested as to what the 12 set has, they're the same colours but of course only half of them. I just quickly swatched them out now because I couldn't remember which colours were in here but I've been easily able to match them up. So in the 12 set we have the sun yellow, mango, poppy red, dark plum, mid ultramarine and bright blue. Then we also have teal green, racing green and kiwi, burnt yellow ochre, natural brown and ink black. So the white is actually in set B I guess but I just really wish they didn't have it in there because it's not very good. I love the Payne's grey and the navy blue, the violet, I think those are great ones to add and the fuchsia as well, it's always one of my favourites. I like the turquoise as well a lot. So I think that this is actually a really appealing colour palette for me. I like lots of bright colours. I think it's got an excellent array of greens and the earth colours maybe not so much but I think the addition of the Payne's grey and the red oxide really does expand that out a bit. So I'm going to get into a painting and since they are ink tense paint pans I may as well use my ink tense paper with them because look there's a picture of them right there <laughs> and this is 100% cotton. You can see it is slightly off-white, it's quite a creamy colour and it's 300 GSM cold press this one so it's got quite a rough texture to it and I've used the pencils on these and not really liked it because the paper was just too rough for the pencils and you got a lot of white underneath but I imagine that using the ink tents as a liquid straight away that this paper is going to be really good. So I'm going to peel out a piece of this. It's very expensive paper, just so you know, and I am therefore very frugal with it. This is a size 7 by 10. So I've drawn out a picture on a separate piece of scrappier paper. I found a cute picture of a toucan, so I've drawn an outline. I'm going to trace it onto my nice paper so I don't have any pencil marks on it, and then I will get painting. I grabbed the old light pad out and started tracing my drawing onto the nice paper. I'm just using a 5H pencil here so it draws very light graphite lines and I wasn't putting much pressure on at all. I just want enough to be able to see where the bird is but otherwise I don't want it to be really domineering and showing through in the final painting. So I added a bit of water to the first part of the painting that I wanted to do which is the toucan's beak and then I went in with some of that Payne's grey to get the base layer of the beak and the general shape of it. All of these paints re-wet really easily so that's a huge bonus and I had no problems at all with any of the colours that I used including in the swatches as you saw earlier. So these work quite similar to watercolours but not the same exactly and that's because they really do behave more like inks as you would expect being that they are ink tents. So what is the difference between inks and watercolours when it comes to behaviour? It's hard to explain it but it's like inks are usually heavier and don't move as much in water as watercolour paints do and that's a lot to do with the type of binder that's in there. Professional watercolour paints are generally designed to spread although it also depends on the type of pigment so earthier pigments don't usually spread as much as really fine pigments like quinacridones. But these inks were for the most part pretty much acting like watercolours, just not moving as much in water as I'm used to. So the other thing with inks, especially if they're India inks or anything pigmented that once it's dry it's not going to re-wet with water very easily or at all, is that it's very easy to get harsh lines because the ink dries faster usually than I can paint and you'll see that line in there and it's so annoying. So you do have to work quickly and keep the edges of the paper wet 
by blending out with another wet brush to prevent any harsh lines from forming and I actually did pretty well in this painting at doing that I've failed miserably before but I was able to get a nice smooth beak as you can see here so I was quite proud of that and for the feathers I just painted the ink directly onto the paper without wetting it first so I could get a more feathery texture look. So I used a couple of different techniques here and this is just stuff that I've figured out over time through trial and error. Now I didn't use every single colour in the set but you'll see I did go around onto the background a bit later with some of the colours I hadn't used just to give it a bit more of an interesting look as the toucan on the plain paper was just a little bit boring I thought. The colours I did use in here were nice and bright and vibrant and they don't lift very easily. They do re-wet just a little bit if you try really hard to scrub it off but for the most part they're like staining watercolors in that once they're down on cotton paper they're not going to budge very easily so they're nice to layer on and you can really build up that vibrancy. And then I added in a bit of white pen highlight at the end which you'll see in a little while so I'll let this run through and you can see how I finished this toucan. Here I am finished. I'm liking this set more so than the smaller one. The set feels a lot more fleshed out having the 24 colours rather than the 12 and I just really like the addition of some of them like that turquoise and it's just a bigger range of all of the colours. That Payne's Grey is fantastic as well. So I recommend this set. I like it very much. I like the colours and they work pretty well. They do act more like inks than watercolours but that's how I would expect them to be. You have to work quite quickly with them so that they don't dry into hard lines. I hope this was helpful to see the full Inktense Paint Pan Studio set both A and B mixed together and I think it's a pretty neat palette. It is a little long so it might be awkward to fit into a bag but it is quite skinny at the same time so it's also fairly lightweight. This is all plastic so it doesn't really weigh that much and the mixing surfaces don't beat up either so that's also really good. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and I will see you all again really soon for my next video. Have a wonderful day and I'll swatch you later. Bye!